to the Tampa Watchmen. Jimmy G. I'm, I'm a member of Grace Bible Church here in sunny Tampa, Florida. And I'm here with Brother Mike Gendron out of South Lake, Texas. Mike is a graduate of the Dallas Theological Seminary. He's also an author, apologist, and evangelist and speaker. He is the head of proclaimingthegospel.org. Hello, Brother Mike. How, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jimmy. Blessed by the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Um, all right, Brother Mike, what we would like to talk to you about today is Roman Catholicism and some of the teachings that contradict the Bible. And before we do that, we just want to let people know that uh, Mike was a Catholic for over 34 years. So we're not doing this out of pride or, or just trying to be mean or anything like that. But Mike, Mike has a, a, a passion and a goal to reach those that's uh, wrapped up in religious deceptions. So I, I just pray for my family, my friends, and anyone online that might be watching this video. We pray that you would check our words and check the Bible, you know. Um, make sure that we're telling you the truth, not by what your religion tells you, but check the scriptures. We, we pray that you would check the scriptures to make sure that we're telling you guys the truth. Um, all right, um, Mike, I got a quote here, and it's from a pastor in California, and you might know him. His name is uh, Pastor John MacArthur, and this is his quote. He says, nothing is more loving than the truth. To let somebody perish in a false system isn't loving at all. To rescue people out of damning and false religion is the only loving to do. Um, Brother Mike, is there any loving thing about staying quiet while your loved ones are trapped up in re a religious lie? Well, we know the greatest act of love is to die for someone else. And that's what the Lord Jesus did for those who would repent and believe the gospel. But I think another great act of love is to tell people the truth, especially to those that are perishing. Because uh, if you say you love somebody and you withhold the truth, that's not really love. That's hatred. Because the nature of deception is that people do not know they're deceived unless you confront them with the truth. That's the loving thing to do because those who are on the wide road to destruction have been deceived. They followed false teachers. And as you mentioned, we need to test every man's teaching with the supreme authority of God's word. And Acts 17, 11 is a great verse for that. The apostle Paul teaching in the synagogues of Berea, he noticed as he was preaching, they were searching the scriptures to test the veracity of an apostle's teaching. And so if an apostle comes under the scrutiny of God's holy word, then every teacher should come under the same scrutiny. Amen, amen. Um, it's awesome that you said that because we heard sometimes, like when you talk to, maybe I talk to some of my, a person in my family or people on the streets, one of their claims is that Catholic Church is the oldest, the oldest, um, the oldest body of, of the church. And the apostle Peter is the founding pope and different things like that. We've heard this said before. Um, is there any truth in, in those claims, uh, Brother Mike? And I would also like you to, Tell us a little bit about the history of Roman, the Roman Catholic Church and how has Rome treated Bible-believing Christians throughout the years? Mm. A lot of questions there. A lot. Well, we can start by affirming that the Lord Jesus started one church. The Catholic Church would say it's the Catholic Church, but it's a church that's made up of born-again Christians. We've been baptized by one spirit into one body, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. So everybody that's been born again is part of the Lord's church. Now, during the fourth century, the original church started drifting into apostasy. And the apostle Paul wrote in 1 Timothy chapter four that in latter times, some would depart from the faith and follow doctrines of demons. And he named one of the doctrines as forbidding people to marry. Well, the Roman Catholic church forbids its clergy to marry. So they were the title of an apostate church. They've drifted into apostasy. They put aside the word of God and started following pagan traditions. During the era of Constantine, he wanted to make the Roman Empire the official religion. He wanted to make it Christianity. And so he allowed uh, pagan practices and traditions to come into the church. And so gradually the Catholic church no longer follow the word of God, they started following pagan traditions. And many of those pagan traditions we see in the Catholic Church today. Awesome. We got some dear friends in Reformed churches that are not too far from here. They're into social justice. 
Also up the street, a church I came from, they continue to promote Rick Warren. And uh, even though Rick Warren saying things like our Pope. And humility, Pope Francis is the perfect example of this. Hmm. He, is a, he is doing everything right. You see, people will listen to what we say if they like what they see. see. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as our new pope... Our new pope. The question is, um, what role do you believe the Catholic Church is playing in social justice, the social justice movement, as well as the secret sensitive movement? Well, the Catholic Church has a goal. In fact, it's been the Jesuit goal for 500 years. The Jesuits were formed at the Counter-Reformation, and they're main objective was to eliminate any opposition to the Roman Catholic Church. The, Ch the Catholic Church has a doctrine of eschatology. They believe that the Lord Jesus Christ will not return until the whole world is made Roman Catholic. And so their goal is to bring all people under the power and influence of the Pope. And so they're doing that in many different ways. The social justice gospel is one of the ways. ecumenical gospel is primarily the way and they've been very convincing to persuade evangelical leaders to accept the Roman Catholic religion as a valid expression of Christianity and we have many evangelical leaders that are signing unity accords with the Catholic Church daring to say that we share a common faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ well that is the furthest thing from the truth our gospel is diametrically opposed to the Roman Catholic plan of salvation and this is uh, verifiable. All we have to do is pick up a catechism of the Catholic Church and contrast it with the Holy Bible, and we will see anyone that believes the Catholic plan of salvation is on the wide road to destruction. They need to get off the wide road and get on the narrow road. It's only entered through Christ, and the only way you can enter is with empty hands of faith. You need to leave everything else behind. Awesome. Um, I know we're, we're on a short time schedule here, and we've been gracious to have uh, Brother Mike teach our Sunday school. He, he preached his service this morning, and he's going to teach again tonight. And I know he's, he's got to be tired from all that traveling, so we only want to ask a couple questions. There's a lot of different teachings here that contradict the Bible. Some as the Pope still is God's glory. He tells he still is God the Father's title by having people call him Holy Father. He still is Jesus' title which in Colossians it says Christ is the head of the church, in Ephesians it says the same thing, but the Pope calls himself the head of the church. And also he stills the Holy Spirit's title of being the vicar or the replacement of Christ on earth. Um, I know I've got family members that pray the rosary, and it's, it's very hurtful and very devastating when I hear about them doing stuff like that. And we know what the scripture says, that Jesus is the one mediator. Um, we also know that Jesus said, pray not in vain repetitions. Um, do you have anything that you can add on that? Well, yeah, um, the rosary is vain repetitions. It's um, wrong in several ways. Number one, we're to pray only to God. I always challenge Roman Catholics, read your Bible and find one place where a God-fearing man prayed to anyone other than God, and they will not find anyone. And that's our goal, is to get Catholics into the Scriptures. And uh, when they abide in God's Word, then they're going to find the truth, and hopefully the truth will set them free from religious deception. But it's also wrong because... We're not to pray to the dead. And when you pray to Mary and the saints, you're praying to the dead. It's an abomination before God in Deuteronomy 18. And so we need to instruct Catholics that Christ is the one mediator. You have to pray through him. He's the one that gave us access to the Father. In fact, one of the miracles that took place at Calvary's cross when Jesus gave up his spirit, the six-inch veil separating the Holy of Holies from sinful man was torn open from top to bottom showing that now through faith in the shed blood of Christ, we can go into the Holy Holies. We now have access to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. And, um, I, I think that ties into the biggest thing here. Our, our, our biggest, um, the, I guess the biggest beef that we have with the Roman Catholic Church is their gospel. I mean, I, th I think that's the biggest thing that separates us from the Roman Catholic Church. Can you share a little bit how the Catholic Church teach their people they can be saved? versus how the Bible teaches us yeah. how we are saved. Yeah, it's a heavy burden for Catholics. They have to do a lot of things. They're not saved by grace, even though they would tell you they are. 
the definition of grace in the Catholic Church is you must merit all the graces necessary for eternal life. Well, it's impossible to merit the unmerited favor of God. And so the Roman Catholic Gospel is they believe the sacrament of baptism puts them on the road to heaven. Then they have to maintain their salvation by receiving the sacraments, which are necessary. They have to do good works in order to be justified. If they're de-justified, they have to do good works to be re-justified. A Catholic never knows where he is before God because he's constantly being justified and re-justified and de-justified. And so um, the Catholic Church also teaches you have to obey the law in order to be saved. Well, according to Galatians 3, that's impossible. If you keep the whole law perfectly and stumble in one part, you're guilty of breaking the entire law. So by trying to get to heaven by obeying the law places you under a curse. And Roman Catholics need to know that their religion is under the curse of God. And I say that by the authority of Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 to 9. Paul said, if anyone, even an angel from heaven, Paul said, even if we, the apostles, come preaching another gospel, we are to be accursed, which is the Greek word for anathema, turned over to God for destruction. And so that's the reason I have such a compassion for Roman Catholics. They're under a religion that's under the curse of Almighty God. And we need to rescue precious souls out from under this religion. And the two primary truths to use in order to rescue them, we must establish the scriptures as the supreme authority for knowing truth. Catholics have three different authorities. They need to put away their sacred traditions and their infallible popes and trust the word of God. And the second thing, we need to show that Christ is the all-sufficient Savior. He did everything necessary to save sinners completely and forever. He canceled the eternal sin debt for those who would believe, and he gives his perfect righteousness as a gift and their only hope to get into heaven. And, 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 uh, some different troubling things in the news, I was, I'll just ask you to comment. We've seen the Pope calling Muslims brethren, um, even though the Quran denies the crucifixion of Jesus, and the Quran also denies that Jesus is the Son of God. The Pope is calling different people into religious dialogues and to pray together, even people from different religions. And we also see the Pope calling for globalism. According to scripture and eschatology, where do you think the world is going? And what part do you believe the Roman Catholic Church will play in it? Well, if we're in the season of the Lord's return, then I believe that the office of the Pope would be the false prophet that would point the world to an antichrist, a political figure. And these two men together will usher in a time of peace and prosperity. But we don't know if we're in the season of the Lord's return. The Lord could tarry another thousand years. I really don't see how that's possible with the, Lord, with the world spinning out of control the way it is today. But knowing that I believe we're in the season of the Lord's return, we see the Roman Catholic Church, especially this Pope, pushing the ecumenical agenda fast forward. I mean, he is gathering all people together, including, as you say, Muslims. He's meeting with them. He's signing accords with them. The Roman Catholic Church has more in common with Islam than it does with biblical Christianity. A lot of people don't realize that. They both follow a works righteousness salvation. They both believe in global domination. They both populate the religion primarily by birth. They both highly esteem Mary. And a lot of people don't realize Muslims esteem Mary so highly. She's the only woman mentioned in the Quran. In fact, she's mentioned in the Quran more than she is in the Bible. And the reason Muslims revere her is because she submitted to God, which they believe is Allah. And that's what Islam means, submission. And so I really believe that since the Bible says in the end times, Satan will use lying signs and wonders to deceive the world, one of the ways he will do that is through apparitions of Mary. Muslims going to apparition sites today, especially those in Fatima, which is a city in Portugal named after Muhammad's first daughter. Muslims are going there to get a message from Mary. And so it's easy to see how one day she will bring these two religions together, which represent together about 40% of the world's population. So if these two religions come together, it's just a matter of time before everyone else falls in line. 
So, so one world religion and one world government. That's right. Amen. I definitely believe that. Um, and this will be the final question. Um, what advice would you give to those who in the Roman Catholic Church or anyone not trusting in the biblical Jesus? Well, they need to prove themselves to be true disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verses 31 to 32, If you truly are a disciple of mine, you will abide in my word. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Right now, Roman Catholics are following a false gospel. They're following another spirit. They're following another Jesus. The Jesus of the Catholic Church is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible finished the work of redemption. The Catholic Jesus is offered daily on an altar. And so um, they need to look to the true Jesus. He's revealed gloriously in Scripture. And only then can they be set free. Um, Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 that we are to pray for those in opposition, that God would grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, so they can escape the snare of the devil that holds them captive to do his will. All unbelievers are held by the devil to do his will. The only way they can be set free is by knowing the truth. And the only way they can know the truth is to abide in God's word. Amen. Amen. And like uh, my brother Luke, who's holding the camera back there, um, a lot of times when we're, we're on the streets and um, we talk to Jehovah Witnesses or we talk to Mormons or like you're even talking about, we talk to Catholics. Um, there's a verse, I, I believe you're quoting in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And one of the things that Paul warns the church about, he, he warns about these false apostles coming as angels of light and they start talking about a different Jesus or they start leading people towards a different gospel. Um, so, so just because somebody comes to you and speaking about a Jesus, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the Jesus of the Bible. And I believe that's what the, the Roman Catholic people are, are, that's what they're pushing is it's a different Jesus. And we would ask our Roman Catholic friends to, to check the Jesus that they're, they're pushing in your church to the scriptures. And that's how a lot of former Roman Catholics came out of Catholicism. They read the Bible and they see what their, their pope or their teach or their priests are teaching them. And they're saying, wow, that something's not right here. I need to submit, submit to my pope or I got to submit to God's word. And we're begging you guys to, to submit, submit to the, God's word. You know, like uh, Brother Mike was saying, abide in his word, hold on to Christ's word. And that truth, um, truth will set you free. So we appreciate you, Brother Mike. Um, where could people reach you? And I know you have a, tons of resources. He has tons of evangelism type things. He has videos. He has Bible tracks. Where could, what's the best place for people to reach you? Well, the best place is on our website, proclaimingthegospel.org. And we have a monthly newsletter that goes out free of charge. And it goes out on the first of every month. But they're all archived on our website. So if you want to keep up with the ecumenical movement and what the Pope's doing and gathering all people together, that's a good place to find out. We're also on Facebook. And there's a lot of Roman Catholics that go on our Facebook page. And um, it's a good opportunity for Christians to engage Catholics with the truth. And hopefully the truth will set them free. Amen. Well, we appreciate your time. And um, we, we encourage you guys to please pray for Brother Mike. Um, we know that the world keeps spinning more and more out of control. We, we pray for um, pastors to, to contend for the faith, as, as we were learning about earlier, contend for the truth. And um, there's nothing loving about letting your your loved ones perish in a false religious system. So we just uh, we thank you. We thank you for your time, brother Mike. We praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Reminded by your word, for my sins you were slain. Turn into the Lord, help me take away the pain. The Lord comes in and does my mood change Time with the Lord he sends comfort to come and heal my pain Working for your Lord will never be vain But increasing my knowledge increases my pain Concern for family and your word was told Most is on the way to hell walking on the wide road Got my heart racing as I read in Galatians There's a false gospel and it got my heart breaking Scripts of exposition got me seeing the opposition Men with false religion and deceiving my traditions I tried all my thoughts and every ammunition And every time I tried to warn it seems that no one listens They just pointing people back to the words you written Even trying to help lost sheep can get you bitten Please show them grace though I'm asking for your words Help them turn for sin before they on the way to burn Help them know I'm not a liar Help them see Messiah Help them find the truth Help me snatch him out the fire Lord I was on my way to 
the L, but you wouldn't let it have it. Praying for your grace, Lord, please save my family. I'm praying for my people in the city of Lorraine. Fill them with your spirit, help them take away the pain. When we first had